Become a Leslie's Pro member, and with almost a thousand locations conveniently located less than three miles from your service route, you can quickly get in and out and take care of your customers. Get Skimmer, America's number one pool service software platform. Listeners of the podcast can try Skimmer for free. Visit my website, swimmingpoollearning.com, and click on the Leslie's Pro and the Skimmer banners to learn more. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Yeah! Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about one of the subjects I cover often, and that's how to deal with problem pools. And dropping the pool is not necessarily the ultimate answer, although it is one solution to the problem. I'll go over some other solutions that you may want to implement when you have a problem pool on your route. Pool Service Pro. Open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's Referral Program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. It was Glenn from the Bottom Feeder. He's the creator of the Bottom Feeder vacuum system. And his quote, and I use this often, is that 95% of the problems on your route come from 5% of your pools. And I think that's true. It's definitely something that I've discovered over the years that it's just a handful of pools that are giving you the most headache. The majority of the pools are easy, no problems. And what I mean by problem pools is that maybe there's too much debris every week in the pool, or the equipment's not running correctly, or there's another underlying problem that makes that makes this pool something you're not looking forward to during the week. And especially on your service day, you kind of dread going there. And this is something, of course, that you can rectify by just dropping the pool. But sometimes you can, of course, fix things to where you can keep the account, especially if the account fits into your route. It's in a nice area. Let's say it's between two other pools that you're doing. And it would be a shame to lose this pool for a problem that can be corrected. Now, even heavy debris pools can have a correction to that. And I guess I can start with that since that's on everyone's mind sometimes is what do I do with this pool that every week I'm skimming it for 10 minutes. I'm using my vacuum system on the bottom. It takes me 35, 40 minutes to clean this pool every week. It's just a real mess. I don't really want to do this pool anymore. And there are, I think, three solutions that you can implement that's going to maybe make or break this pool and you may be able to save it. You may not be able to save it. And these are the three things that I would definitely implement with a pool that has a lot of heavy debris each week. Number one, and this is probably going to move the needle the most, and that's have the trees trimmed. Now there's some costs involved and customers may not want to trim the tree. They may give you all kinds of excuses, but if they trim the trees, about 70% of the problem is eliminated. Most of the leaves in the pool are dead leaves that are in the tree itself. A lot of the dirt and dust are in the tree itself. Then it blows in when the wind blows a little bit or when you get a gust of wind. And it's a real mess. And a lot of it has to do basically with the fact that the trees need to be trimmed back. And of course, it's going to cost, depending on how many trees there are, let's just say there's 10 trees around the pool and a landscape will charge, or a tree trimmer, I should say, will charge $200 per tree. A trim and bag, that's $2,000. Now, for the customer, that's a lot of money, and a lot of times they won't do it. So there's a secondary thing you can do at that point, and that is if you have one-and-a-half-inch threaded return lines, installing a device called the Pool Skim is something that I found to be a really great solution to pools with heavy debris. Now, this device only works if there's multiple return lines, usually. Now, I've used it before in a pool with one return jet, but there was a spa return, or actually three spa jets that I use to equalize it. This pro- product originates from South Africa. The plumbing is a little weird. They use different size PVC pipes than we do here, but the fittings work in one and a half inch threaded fittings in the US. So even though the PVC pipe that comes with it is a little bit funky because we're not used to it, it's really thin also, It's not our type of PVC pipe, but you can easily get this thing to work. It basically creates a secondary skimmer with a bag on there to capture the debris. And you'll really be amazed at how much debris it picks up in a week. A pool that you would spend 10 minutes skimming, you would spend one minute skimming. A pool that had the bottom full of debris 
has no debris basically because this device is in there working effectively. Now in conjunction with the pool skim, I would recommend a suction side cleaner to get anything that falls on the bottom out of the pool. So you can of course get the Polaris Atlas or the Polaris Max or the Hayward pool cleaner or the Aquanaut. Put it in there with a canister. I would get a big canister like the Hayward large canister or the Pentair leaf trap. And then I would have the automatic cleaner running on the bottom. I would have the pool skim skimming the surface debris. And you might be amazed at this pool that went from something that you would spend 35 to 40 minutes. Now you're spending 15 minutes there. That's how well this device works. It's like $150. You can buy it on Amazon or directly from Pool Skim USA. And it's something that's highly underrated on the market. I really recommend this. Now plan B would be to get a solar skimmer. There's several out there now. I think the most affordable one is the Betta, B-E-T-T-A. I think you can get that one for about $250 right now. And this is an effective way to pick up the surface leaf debris. Now it doesn't work great with the suction cleaner, but it can work fairly well with it. But this is one way to get a lot of the surface debris. And I've used these successfully. Over the years, I used to use the Solar Breeze. And these are great cleaners as far as cleaning the surface of the pool and not having really any device. So you won't need to connect the pool skim. Now, of course you can actually have both of these working at the same time. That would be really great. The solar skimmer or the pool skim and the iPair Surfer S1 is also a good choice. There's several of them. You can look on Amazon. There's several of these solar powered skimmers. And I think these are a great way to cut down on the debris. Now, if you're worried about it getting sucked into the skimmer, which does happen often with these, just get a pool noodle, cut it cut it in pieces and put those noodles in the skimmer like a little jail cell or a little sewer grate and that'll stop the solar surface cleaner from being sucked into the skimmer. But it's really effective and it's a great way to reduce the amount of debris that falls to the bottom. If you can get it skimmed off the top during the week, not a lot of it falls to the bottom. So you can really turn a heavy debris pool into a pool that you can keep using these three methods. Another problem pool type is really old equipment, and I've run into this a lot, especially in my area of California, where a lot of people just don't like upgrading their equipment. They're kind of stuck in their ways. And up until a few years ago, I would say, I'll just date it from the year, let's say 1997 to 2010. There were quite a few brass pumps still on my route, a few Anthony filters, definitely a lot of Purex 2000 series filters, a lot of them still out there around the country. So you're talking really, really old equipment. And I must say, if you've never tried to vacuum a pool with a brass pump, it's really poor suction all the way around. It's because the impeller also is brass. And over time, it wears out pretty, you know, pretty good to the point where you're not getting a lot of suction, but it's still pulling water. And by the way, those are really hard to work on. So I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even consider working on a brass pump, changing out the impeller or anything that goes wrong with it. Just replace it at that point. Also, I found they don't seal great on the lid. One good thing about the brass pump is that if it does lose its prime, nothing will burn out because it seems to hold up really well. There's, there's no plastic, so it doesn't melt. But I find that the lid doesn't seal that great either. So you have those problems working against you. Even an old pump like a Duro glass or a Maxi glass pump that's kind of wearing out. It's a real pain to use if you want to manual vacuum a pool. It's also not really effective in skimming the pool. So really old equipment, I'm speaking specifically of the pumps here, can really be a drag and make make your day difficult. It's one of those things where you'd have to figure out alternate ways to vacuum a pool. When I have a pool that would pour suction, I really don't vacuum that pool. I find an alternate way, so I'll use the vacuum system or I'll use the Precision 2.0 or the Vac Daddy, something that's going to utilize a way to vacuum it without using the skimmer. And then you have old filters that make the pool really hard to deal with. I mentioned the Anthony filters with the rectangular grids in there or the vertical grids. Not the best filter, really difficult to work with. Backwash valves never work after a while. And the same with the Purex 2000 filters. After a while, the rotor valve on the bottom wears out and the backwash does not work. Also, it's really difficult to get the lids back on though sometimes. I'm pretty good at that now. I've had many years of experience getting the Purex 2000 series lids on, but they're a struggle for a lot of people and it could be a drag with an old filter having to clean the filter. All these things weigh you down. 
Of course, the simple solution and the only solution really besides dropping that account is to get the customer to upgrade the pump and the filter, probably both at the same time. And it's something that you just have to talk them into doing. Otherwise, you'll move on at that point. There's no other real viable solution here. There's ways to kind of get by while you're doing the account until they can upgrade the equipment. But you really want the customer to upgrade the equipment. And one rule of caution here really suggests manufactured equipment to them, like Pentair, Hayward, or Jandy. Don't go with something on Amazon. I know they're going to be coming out looking at really cheap pumps or really cheap filters because that's kind of the nature of the customer with really old equipment. Steer them away from that to really good equipment. Let them know that if they put in a brand name pump, like a Pentair and a nice filter, they're going to get many more years out of the equipment than something cheaply made. And just let them know that the manufactured brands are much better. They have a better warranty. They're made better. And you're going to get your money's worth out of those, even though they cost more up front. That's something to really invest in. So that's your solution for that type of account. And there's really nothing in between that you can do except have them replace the equipment or drop that account. Let me run through a few that should be on your short list of having them dropped. And really, there's not much remedy when you run into one of these accounts. One of these is a pool where all the plaster is kind of chipped and cracked. It's really hard to manage this pool because black algae and algae tends to grow in the cracks in the plaster. You go to vacuum it, you may have you may pick up some more plaster. You put an automatic cleaner in there and it may pick up some more plaster. Your pump basket is full of plaster. You know you really need to consider having the customer remodel the pool, which a lot of them are reluctant to do, or just drop that account. So that would be something to consider if you have a pool with a lot of chip plaster that the customer is not addressing. If you have a customer that has dogs swimming in their pool, I mean, one dog is not terrible, but if you have two or three dogs in the pool, there are some remedies. There are kind of short-term fixes, you know, changing the filter cartridges more often, cleaning the filter more and charging the customer, putting a Polar X in there, having boards in the water. These are all short-term solutions. But if it gets to the point where the pool is always turning on you, it's really a pain, doesn't look clean, then I would suggest dropping that pool. The customers really don't aren't going to stop their dogs from swimming. A lot of them can't stop the dogs from swimming. They're just too active and they really like the pool. So in that case, you would want to just not have not service those pools. Now there are a couple of things the customers have tried that have been successful depending on the dog breed. Dogs generally don't like jumping into the pool, although some do. They like to get in from the step area. So a lot of customers will cover the steps with lawn chairs so the dogs can't get in the pool. I think that's fairly an effective trade-off if the customer wants to try to stop the dog from getting in the pool on a daily basis. And maybe the dog uses the pool once in a while. I think that's perfectly fine. But if they can find a way to keep the dog out, either with a fence or put chairs over the stairs, that would be effective. But I've had dogs on my route that just jump in the pool. So that's not really a big deterrent. And it may be dangerous at that point because the dogs can't get back out of the pool if you have chairs blocking the steps. So use that with caution and you have to kind of know the dog breed. But definitely, you know, if dogs are killing the pool, you'll have to drop that account. Any type of short-term rental or Airbnb would be something that you may want to drop. It depends on if the customer wants to call you every time there's a vacancy. If you can do that on your route, if it's something that's kind of centralized and you can go there any day during the week and you can leave space on your route for it, I would say that's not a bad thing because then you can maximize your income on one pool. It's like a mini commercial pool at that point. So if they have guests turn over two times a week, you go there twice. Three times a week, you go there three times. And you're charging for every time you go to that pool. So it can be lucrative. But these pools have to be set up specifically for the amount of usage. So definitely bore rates in there. A pool RX, I would be using enzymes in there. I would make sure the filters are cleaned more often. And then I would... Put a salt system on there. If there isn't already a salt system, and I would crank that thing up so that the chlorine level is like at 10 or 15 parts per million every day. And that's kind of how you circumvent the Airbnb usage. Now, if they don't want you to come there every time they have a vacancy or they transfer someone new in, then I wouldn't take that account. I would definitely drop it because you're really picking up something that can be a liability for you if someone gets sick. And plus, it's going to get destroyed if you're not there once you once someone moves out. 
of that short-term rental because they probably killed the pool and are using it like crazy. And you want to make sure the next person is going to have a nice clean pool. So that would be the exception for the Airbnb short-term rental. And then there are other problems that you can try to correct before you drop the pool. For instance, if the customer is always paying late, that's a problem because you're accounting for money that's not coming in. Sometimes they're later than you want them to be. And sometimes you can't get a hold of them to get the payment. Those are really a problem because you're using a lot of problem customers because using a lot of energy to track them down, using creative budgeting and your you know the books aren't balanced because of that customer or maybe two or three of these customers something really to consider I had a member in my coaching program that was in an area that was not the greatest as far as income and they had about 20 percent of their accounts late every month it was really hard for them to manage their business with that many late accounts because they're doing work technically for free waiting for the money to come in trying to balance everything It got to the point where they just actually sold their business because they couldn't manage it. And I can see that being a major problem and dropping people that are late is really painful because you're losing an account that's probably pretty good. And it's something to consider how, you know, how far you want them to go as far as late payments. And it's something that at at some point may get to the point where it's not sustainable. I think the whole idea here is when you drop an account, you want to have an account that will replace it. We call it the one-for-one rule. You drop one account, you'll have another new account already on service that replaces the income from that. That way you're not losing any money. So if you have a heavy debris pool that they're not going to address the problem, when you get a nice pool that has no debris, maybe it's a 10-minute type pool, then you drop the one that's heavy debris and you have that new account. You don't want to be dropping accounts without something to replace the income. So kind of suffer through it until you get another account that covers that income, and then you can drop that problem pool at that point. Looking for other podcasts I've recorded, you can find those on my website, swimmingprolearning.com. Just click on the podcast icon on the banner, and then a drop-down menu of over 1,500 podcasts will appear there. And if you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Real quick, if you're not using pool service software, try Skimmer free for 30 days at Get Skimmer backslash pool guy. Again, that's get skimmer backslash pool guy. Skimmer, everything you need to run your pool service business all in one app.